comment. Uh, please, you can open your mic. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, my comments are for the Victor. What is the diameter useful for this technique? Amazing. What do you think? What is the diameter of feeder vein or small vein? We can use this technique on the patient. Okay. Uh, my, my, usually my experience showed me that uh, anti two or three millimeters veins, I'm able to do it. But I've been working just a little bit larger with very good results with no trouble. But I would like to know what Dr. Ashit said regarding about that. What is your diameter and how do you start working with those patients, Dr. Ashish? Okay, Dr. Ashish, uh, from India, please. So first of all, greetings from India to everyone. It started off very well on the talk. Uh, as far as the uh, answer to the diameter thing is concerned, I think what uh, is ideally recommended, uh, the recently published uh, white uh, paper report, the Clax technique in the phlebology, is uh, 0.1 1.5 millimeter veins can be treated. So uh, personally, I do uh, treat veins even up to three millimeters and I've had no problem uh, to date. What do you think, uh, Philippe? Uh, I think the diameter is a good point of discussion. Uh, we've been using this is your legs. Yes, this is my legs. This is one legs we did, the clocks. Yes, what is the results? Nice, doctor. This is the crucial moment of the procedure. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Hajish, I think you have uh, an opinion. Uh, yes, I would just like to add uh, to what Dr. Eugene just mentioned. Uh, ideally, a uh, uh, DSLR, uh, digital single lens reflex, uh, should be used with an external flash, what Professor Miyak actually does. Uh, the external flash is rotated 1 to 3 degrees and it uh, faces a white ceiling and the DSLR is, an, is on an auto mode, uh, so that uh, without much expertise, one can do that. Uh, I don't use an external flash, but I have settings in my Flebo suit where you, I have the same light arrangement for every patient. And as Dr. Eugene rightly said, it is a most crucial part of Clax technique because there is no other objective evidence of improvement. And in fact, uh, there has been a paper by, if I'm not mistaken, Santiago et al. Uh, in 2018 Flebology uh, regarding the uh, patient satisfaction being improved, uh, the perception being improved after they were showed the pre and post treatment photographs. So yes, photo documentation has to be very particular. In fact, it is said that you should be, we should have at least 20 pre-op and 20 post-op photographs. Great. Okay, there is just one comment. I have also the way that I'm trying to take and do the injection with the Frido. I didn't have very good, um, uh, very good images because the Fredo gives some frozen air and the frozen air change the images for the view in the TV. Okay, this is some stuff that just bring in from my uh, colleagues. This is the before and after of Dr. Ashish Dadas from, uh, from India. You might see one uh, before the treatment and the other one after the treatment. You see how the vein, the feeder disappear and also the branches are going down already. And at that one, you see the before and after too. There is another video of Dr. Ashish that will run right now. You can see over there the work in the same that me. He is doing cooking the vein with the laser and after he cooked the vein with the laser, he inject at the same time. And you see the difference before and after, before and after, before and after. This is the way that we work and this is done by Dr. Ashish Dadat from uh, Mumbai. Very nice and a very interesting presentation. Really enjoyed all these yeah. films. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Mark Whitley to join our platform as a panelist. And uh, we're very eager to join his meeting in April in UK. Um, you can open your mic, uh, Mark, and tell us uh, 
what happened to your meeting and tell us your feedback. Unfortunately, COVID happened, <laughs> as, as we all know. I would say that was a fantastic talk, Victor. Really, really nice talk. And um, uh, I've wanted to know more about Clax for some time. I've seen small presentations before, but I've not seen such a clear presentation. Can, can I ask some questions? Yes, so we are ready yes. for the question. I would like to have also, besides of, uh, of uh, Mike, also, I would like... So, so you don't have to cook the whole vein, it's just certain areas, then the no. skill. You see the videos. I will set it up, and again, if you like to see it. You will, you would like to see it? Is Thank you. Is ready to see the videos and again? It, 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 I will go backwards. Because Thank you. you see, the, I will go backwards and again. I will show you the way that I've been working, the show that I will show you the way that uh, Eugene is working and the, the way that you see the feeder vein start, start over here at that corner. This is the, the first one that we shot. Then we are trying to find out where are the other veins that they are large and you we shoot over them. You see that point? Okay, I will show you the way that uh, is working, uh, is doing it Ashish in India. So I think you Mark is saying, uh, do you do the laser so, every three millimeter or four millimeter? I think no, Mark no, no. wants to know the science behind your okay. selection point for laser fiber. Is that can right, Mark? Know? Absolutely. Can I, yeah. can I, can I reply to you? Yes, okay. please. Yeah, uh, sir. So, uh, hello, sir. Uh, so basically your question is, hi. Uh, so basically your question is uh, asking as to, uh, do we cover the entire length of this uh, vein segment? So we are, using a, uh, we are using a six millimeter spot here. So that basically means that the laser is covering three millimeter on either side of the uh, the point. So actually, so for instance, if the feeder vein is 15 millimeter in length, so usually we would like to give five shots. So because uh, uh, three millimeter on either side, and if the vein does not respond, then we can do a second pass. So that would be the answer to your question. So we do cover the entire segment, but then three millimeter on the either side because it is a six millimeter spot. Thank you. And in that, in that one you've just shown, Ash, it's a very nice one on the front of the tibia. Did you, you just use Clax, the laser bit for the underlying feeder and no laser on the surface? The, the surface is taken by the sclerotherapy? No, sir. Uh, the uh, laser is applied both to the feeder vein as well as the surface vein, the telangiectasias. It, it doesn't work that way. The, because basically, Clax is all about synergy. The laser uh, are damaging the vein wall, uh, causing the vein lumen to collapse, and the sclerosin getting trapped inside in the inside the collapsed vein segment, and that is how the synergy is produced. So whether it is the feeder vein or the telangiectasias, we need to use both. And you're not seeing any depigmentation of the skin from the laser, uh, sir. Uh, we do get uh, some. Um, I, I do get uh, some amount of bruising, which AKMO says. Uh, for a period of say two three weeks, but it resolves on its own. But in my cases, I, I I'm yet to find a, a pigmentation which has lasted for you know more than two or three months. So, so uh, but you don't burn the skin. You don't get a white patch from the laser. And no, because we are protecting it with the cryo cooler, the, the minus thirty degree air that that, uh, that protects the skin. And one final question, I know I'm hogging this, but I'm very interested. One final question is, did you use compression on that case you showed us? No, uh, if, if a patient is uh, only doing, uh, is undergoing clax, no compression, at least I do not use any compression. From, from, my, from my point of view, I think one of the biggest advantages, which I didn't realize till today, is the lack of compression because every one of my patients hates compression. And they all say to me, if you can stop using compression, I'll send all my friends to you. Compression is the thing that everyone hates after sclerotherapy. And of all the things I've seen about plaques, that's the, probably the biggest message I've seen today. 
Uh, okay, Victor, I have uh, some... Gracias, gracias. And uh, if we can ask all the panelists to give a few words as uh, a nice closer to this uh, session, each panelist can open the mic himself and welcome Loyal Kabnik uh, to join us from United States. So let us uh, start by Dr. Ashish. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Victor. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. It covered almost uh, all the aspects in the time given. Uh, uh, I, would just, I would just like to, uh, uh, and I, I was wanting to do that for uh, some time now, uh, was a word about uh, the use of uh, STD or polydecanol in CLACs. And I would agree with uh, Dr. Eugene. Uh, I personally would not prefer uh, using uh, any type of uh, detergent sclerosin. 50% dextrose works well. Uh, after I had my training with Professor Miyake last year and I started, uh, majority of the times the question is whether dextrose really works. And I can tell you that it does work. In fact, uh, uh, that was the reason why CLAX was pioneered by Professor Miyake because uh, uh, the detergent uh, sclerosants, they can cause uh, ischemic ulcers uh, due to the venous capillary reflux theory. There is a paper by uh, Professor Hiroshi Miyake. Uh, so personally, I feel uh, uh, CLAX is uh, definitely a promising technique. There are a lot of questions, whether the cost is uh, validated, whether, you know, how the 75% and 50% work, whether it is as good as sclerotherapy. Further studies are definitely needed, but it is definitely promising new technique on the horizon. Okay, I'm in your Russia, Brazil, and all over the world. Thanks always to Dr. Kalsuo Miyake. He is the master of this. And um, um, we are trying to show part of our expertise. Now I would like to open the, the, the dialogue to all of our partners. Um, uh, stockings. That's why we're not using the square results, only dextrose and laser. And the second point about the cooling, I'm set. Thank you. Alvaro, do you have, have some comments comment. for us? I have a comment, a very great comment from Kazu Miyak. Uh, I want to read it because uh, this is the, the very, very, very famous guy. He is the one who make it. He is the yeah. one who we learn. Yeah. Everybody learn from him. Yes, exactly. And he is written. Uh, Actually, he has written a very nice comment. I yeah, read it as it is. Congratulations, Professor Kaneta and Ashish. Very nice. Uh, experience and presentation. Perfect result. The most important part of CLAX uh, is the synergy. When we perform stereotherapy, the vein telangiectasia is already pre-cooked by the laser. Dextrose 50% is weaker than detergent and other detergents, but powerful enough to finish the job. Some extras, the high velocity, avoid skin ulcers, and the straws come off. Okay. Thank you very much. Professor uh, Loyal Kabnik, uh, closing remark. Yes. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, Victor, I've, I've heard your talk before, so I really appreciate uh, your knowledge base on CLAX. In the United States, CLAX is not very popular at, at this point. Uh, as you know, it, it takes a significant investment to have a laser uh, to also do sclerotherapy, but there's a couple of things that we would like to know. Number one, has there been a, a comparison trial between sclerotherapy and CLAX? Number two, um, there is a, a competing method uh, with uh, CLAX where they, where they do sclerotherapy and then finish with laser. Why do you believe that laser should be done first uh, before sclerotherapy? Ashish, you will go, okay, you will answer? Yes, you can answer, yes. Yeah, but, sir, uh, the answer to that question, the why sclerotherapy would be first before, uh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, the laser would be first before the sclerotherapy is, uh, uh, the idea is to uh, cook the vein and cause the vein lumen to collapse and thereby helping the entrapment of the sclerosant in the vein and increasing the synergy between the two. So that is one reason. Uh, secondly, and somewhat practically, if we take the puncture first, the blood starts oozing and then we have to put the cotton pellets. So once we do that, we cannot apply the laser. That's the second one. 
and the third reason would be and again it's a minor one but still uh, after puncture the sterile the laser tip is not sterile so we do not usually touch the skin after the puncture so those are the three reasons why we generally uh, prefer uh, doing a uh, laser before the sclerotherapy yes. thank you and we'll take a final uh, remark from dr alvro on on his thing okay bye bye to everybody else thanks to everybody stay safe Thanks. Be healthy. Be safe. Okay, healthy. Thanks for everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye, guys. Let's leave.